Hi there, how you doing? This is Adam Rafferty. Thanks for tuning in. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to play my arrangement of Killing Me Softly. Just want to give you a couple notes. The original is by a singer named Roberta Flack. I believe it was from 1973. Her version is really beautiful. That's the version of the song that I listened to to get the arrangement. There are some other famous people who've done the song, uh, some famous recordings. I'm not so crazy about most of them, so please go and listen to the original. And the second quick note I want to give you, the original Roberta Flack version is in the key of B-flat minor, so I'm, I'm putting a capo on the first fret, and this is how I usually play it, and this is how I played it on YouTube. With my left hand, I'm playing over here an A minor chord. But the sound is B-flat minor. Okay. However, in the lessons that are going to follow, I've taken the capo off, and I'm showing it to you in the key of A minor. It's just easier because when I play this, I want to be able to call it an A minor chord. Or when I play this, I want to be able to call it a G chord. And it would it boggles my mind to not to, to play it at a different fret but call it the other name. So I'm gonna show it to you in open position with no capo. And should you want to use a capo on the first fret once you're performing it, that's up to you. I try whenever possible to do songs in the original key because every key has a very distinctive color. Imagine a turquoise to this one, let's say. And imagine that I'm conveying that exact shade of turquoise rather than a shade of green. I'm just throwing out examples. So, so keys have colors. That's why I like to play things when I, when possible in the original key. So enough blabbing out of me. Grab your guitar. Uh, we're going to go close up shots for the rest of the lessons on the hands so you won't see me talking but you'll hear me and you'll be able to see my hands up close as I guide you through Killing Me Softly. Okay, let's get started. All right, everybody. So let's start with the intro of Killing Me Softly. Um, it's a cool kind of jazzy chord intro, but I'm going to break it down rhythmically and show you, show you what I'm doing. First thing, if you'll play this melody note, D, with your index finger, and then E, open E with your middle finger, I'm going to give you a rhythm now, and we're going to build on this, okay? So the first thing you got to do is you have to be able to feel this. One, two, three, and. Okay, so that's step one. Boom, be bam, bang, bang. I'll do it one more time. A one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a the bang de ding 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 ga ding ga di ding ding ding. Okay, I think I've made that point. So now we're gonna do a couple of chord shapes. Let me show you. fifth fret. Okay, and we're going to call that A minor 11. Don't worry, don't let that jazzy name freak you out. And then 
I'm going to do, I'm going to go up to a D7 chord. Okay. Uh, let me show you what I did. I moved, I left the first and fourth finger, I put the second finger here, and then I put the third finger here. So now watch what I'm doing uh, in conjunction with the little syncopated melody that I showed you. I'm playing the first two together. Okay. Let me see what it is. Okay. So I'm playing low A and D together. Middle is already waiting over here on the high E string. Then I plug these two together. Play that once and then play the th third string and the E together. So on the first go round, these two strings, you play an E with them. See what I just did? And then over here, That's going to be a little, we're going to, it's going to be a little different. So I'm playing the thumb on the first of each of those. Oops, sorry. Can you see what I'm doing? So what's kind of nice about that is we're getting this ringy, uh, I call it ringy, we're getting this nice groovy but ringing melody and we're getting some syncopated bass along with that. that four times. And, and then we, we're going to start with the song after that. So on the fourth time I go and I let it ring. And that's our introduction to the song. Okay, so let's go to the next video uh, where I'm going to show you how to play the beginning of the verse. Okay, so we're at the verse of Killing Me Softly, and I'm going to show you a couple different approaches that I take to the melody uh, that might interest you. I'm going to show you the easiest one first. Uh, starting on an A minor chord, you're going to finger the first, uh, the, the second and third finger, the two notes here, and you're going to go with your thumb. That's the accompaniment. And then that's the begin beginning of the melody. And it's going to go on to, uh, to the, the rest of the melody. Now the reason I'm only showing you this little bit is because I'm fooling around myself with a couple of different ways of, of playing just even these first few notes. They said it, they said it, da, 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 right? I've been messing with something like this, watch. And then going here, see what I just did? Because the notes ring a little more. That's a little easier and more standard. But there is a problem that I'm finding with this, with this fingering. Listen, you hear those squeaks? Well, you're going to get squeaks. You hear all those little whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. See? So, what I can suggest is I'm, I'm also going to look for some different fingers, even just trying it with the same frets but with different fingers. See, if I do it with three and four, I 
haven't showed you that second chord yet. I promise I will. I'm talking about a very subtle difference. So if you're just starting out and you and you want to get playing this song, you want to get up and running, do, do that. Uh, but if you want to be a little bit more advanced and go for some possible subtlety, you might want to investigate this. So the second chord, uh, you're going to put your pinky here, second finger here, first, on, that's on the third string, and then your first finger on the sixth string, and you're going to go, I, what I do is... Now notice the thumb was in between. Those, thumb, those thumbs came exactly on downbeats because the melody is syncopated. So let me, let me play this whole thing now. One, two, three, four. Okay, you see what I just did so far? And I'll give you a secret. In this, look, if you look at my leg in the left hand screen that you're seeing, I'm tapping it right now, you'll see when I tap like this, that I'm, I'm thumping out one, two, three, four. Your thumb over here should really hook up with So when that thumb locks with the, with the feeling of the beat, even if you're playing a ballad and it's pretty, it'll give a feeling of being grounded. Watch what I'm doing. Watch the thumb over here hook up with the leg here. One, two, three, four. See that? Okay. And you can't see what I'm doing with my foot here. I'm actually tapping the heel into the floor, not the, not the toe. I'm kind of going roo, roo, with, the, with the heel of my foot. One, two, three, and. See that thumb? The thumb and foot are hitting right at the same time. And of course, it's good to know which melody notes hook up with the foot also. So those are two different ways. See? Or. Okay. So in the interest of keeping this video short, because uh, I wanted to show you that fingering thing, let's stop here, and the next video will continue where we left off. Okay, so we're still uh, in the verse of Killing Me Softly. In the last video, we did this first, uh, first two chords, which are A minor. Oops, excuse me, A minor. To D. That's actually D with F sharp, F sharp in the bass. And now we're going to go to a G shape. It's like a G chord. Only with the third and fourth finger, I'm playing on the the uh, B string and there. And now watch what I'm doing with the right hand. And then to kind of a C shape. You don't really need the the middle finger. And then I walk down there. Let's review that much so far. So the, the chord progression is like A minor, A minor, D with F sharp in the bass, kind of a shell of a G chord, then C. Here we go. Okay, and we're going to go back for another A minor. going to grab to the B here and the, and the A there. So I'm going four, two, one. And then I'm sneaking in my third finger there. This is, this is pretty tricky. Um, you'll need to get your thumb 
uh, on the left hand back. It's like you're doing a little D chord here with your second, third, and fourth finger and you're grabbing a B. Okay, so if you're having trouble, like I am right now, you could let go of that D. Like that. See, I'm letting go of the D. Things sometimes change when I actually sit here in the studio and give a lesson because I'm not standing up and all the angles of the guitar are different. Okay, or depending on your technique. Then you're going to go, watch this, leave the second and third finger down, you're going to go, I'm playing low E, open B, and then G, then thumb and middle over here. Okay, you got that much so far? Now watch this, I go to the B and D string, and I hammer those two on. Okay. And even though there's a little triplet in there, when I do the, uh, the, it's all in time. So now watch my foot here. Next part, I do a sort of open sounding A minor 7 chord. It's not your standard chord. Watch, you're at the 5th fret, 3rd and 4th finger, open B string, and then you're going to pull off from the G. Alright, then play the C melody note there. Okay, now watch it with the foot again to see where the thumb is hooking up. One and two. Okay, then we go back to a G shape. Then we've got a B7 chord coming up. Let me show you what I do. First, what I do is I move the fourth finger up to the fourth fret, B string, and I just play a bass note here. But then, after that, I have to, I'm going to have to play this melody note again. I grab this note with the thumb, because we're going to do that. And the reason I don't grab it all as a chord is that ear hears that new thing coming bah, bah, bah. you hear that as a more pronounced uh, voice if there's a little silence ahead of it see that okay so um, here we go the whole thing that I've shown you so far that if you want or just go you don't have to hammer that okay so that's the basics those are the basics of the verse and like I said over here um, with this chord I had a little trouble before just whatever situation you're in if you stand and then you sit or if you sit and then you stand or if you're playing a different guitar just Always be ready to adjust the way I'm adjusting right now to make the music work in the situation. Okay, so let's go to the next video where I show you how to play the hook of the song. Okay, so now we're at the hook of the song.
where Roberta Flack or whomever is singing it sings the killing me softly blah, blah, blah. so let me show you a couple of different approaches uh, actually let me show you my approach versus other other approaches there's a a right hand thing that I do sometimes look at this I'm brushing I'm playing an E minor chord with G on the top and I'm, I'm just using my middle finger on the high E string and brushing it. And I'm crashing into the B string a little bit. And what's happening is you're getting more of a pop on the note that you want to be in the front as the melody note. But there's this sort of ringing of the other strings. Of course, uh, a standard guitar approach would be to use two or three fingers to go or but that's a it's a little too orderly and exact and it um, I don't want to hear that much of the other string so see that's giving me uh, a difference in volume and predominance and attack on the melody note and it's leaving the other note more as an accompaniment note, which is what I want. So here's how I do it. Sometimes I alternate, but lately I'm just doing it with one finger. I'm going... Okay, so... Pull off, and then B string. And notice, I'm getting my little click in there to try to balance the feeling of yes it's a ballad yes it's pretty but we want a little bit of groove in there so mm, two uh, three and see where i just put that click mm, and see that okay next uh i'm gonna play what looks like an a minor chord shape but at the third and fourth fret. Same thing with the, um, I believe I do the same thing with this brush, with just the second finger. Or I'll move my first finger out of the way so you can see it. And I slide the whole thing down. Now I know there's a big old squeak there, but that's okay. Okay. Then a D, same thing. And then I believe I do middle thumb there. Whoops. How do I do that? Now that I'm sitting here teaching it, I can't I can't do it the way I usually do it. Let me see. So I'm not really sure how I do that, but the notes you're going to need are... Okay. That's probably one of those things that I do a little bit differently every, every time. You could do it... Okay. But now watch what's going to happen, regardless of how you play it, or as some people say, irregardless of how you play it, and that's wrong to say that. So irregardless of how you play it, you're going to end and that last B that I played is a lyric. So watch. See, so killing me song. See that? Now, let me show you what I do when you see it in totality, it'll make sense. Now watch this. I've got this A that I'm holding there. Now, because there's this inner voice in the choir on the original recording that sounds like it's doing... So Let me show you the fingering. Three, oh. Watch open D, then and, 
before. That's actually more accurate. But you can just do it if you want. That's more like what she sings. Then I'm grabbing an A chord, pinky, bar the top uh, either four or three strings. Okay, so let's do this much so far. Now watch what I'm going to do. With the fourth finger still on the high E string, bring that down and you're going to play like a D sus chord. And you're going to, I'm doing like a backwards D chord. I'm putting the first finger on the second fret back here. Now watch a trick that I'm doing over here with the thumb. And I'm coming back and I'm muting the A string. See what I did with the back of my thumb? And then. See what I'm doing? Now I've showed you these pieces. Let's go to the next video to continue the hook. Okay, so in the last video, uh, I was showing you the hook, and we're going to continue the hook to Killing Me Softly. Then we were here at this weird upside down D chord. And you might be wondering why are we doing it not like a regular D chord. So watch what's going to happen. I'm going to leave the third finger, bring the second finger down to C, and watch what you're going to do. Okay, that's kind of a stretch. So I'm hammering onto the E string, and then I'm letting go and I'm getting like the two outer notes of a C chord. Basically, this is going to make the sustaining of the bass and the sustaining of the melody work out a little better than if you had to lift your... had to always change the shapes of your hand. So try and, try and bear with what I'm showing you. Then... Vaguely strumming that, then going down to G here. Sorry. Again, just with the second finger. But I'm grabbing, this is a little tricky now with the G. I'm grabbing. So I'm going. Getting those two notes. First one, I'm doing a little back strike. Back to then. What am I doing there? It's like an F major seven chord, but with open B. And then letting go of the bass note. This is that is something I may improvise and do a little bit differently from from gig to gig or from time to time. So again, this is always a little bit different each time. So forgive me if I brush with a different finger. It's it's not cast in stone, but you're getting the basic idea. And this 
this business with the second finger it's it allows us to do all these harmonized melodies without having to move the whole hand we can stay where we are and have a smooth bass line so one more time That's one way to do it. There you have it. Uh, that gets us through the hook. Okay, let's go on to the next video where we talk about the form and I show you also how I do my little uh, improvised sounding solo on it. All right, gang, so, so far we've done the verse and one hook and that's gonna repeat. So I've already showed that to you. So, so, so far, let's just review the intro. You've got the... That's that thing four times, and then you've got... Right? Which I showed you, and then... Right, that's the hook. It's gonna, after what I showed you, where... Um, hook then you're gonna go back you're gonna go back for a whole other verse and hook so that's the form of the song then after the second hook I do uh, a little sort of solo on the guitar because that's where Roberta Flack is just singing. Uh, oh. She's just singing not the lyrics of the song. She's just singing the word oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh. So let me show you where this comes in, and then I'm going to show you the exact fingerings, but just so you understand where it comes. This is the second hook. it's going to come. Okay, so that's right the point where it's going to come. Let me show you what that is now. She sings something that sounds like So I did a little melody thing based on that. It's uh there's a compositional device called a sequence. You've heard it. A sequence is when you take a melody through different scale steps. So I did this little melody, which would fit over. And then just move the whole thing down. Except I'm using a technique, kind of like a bell choir, where I use harmonics and I'm trying to open the sound of the guitar up so it doesn't just sound like a scale being played on one string. So here's how I do it. And I only, I usually only play uh, the melody notes. I don't play any bass notes, at least at this time. So watch, 12th fret, that's your third string. D, harmonic, see that? So instead of going, I'm going, and the rhythm is bang, dang, chicka, bong, ba, bong, 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 that's the rhythm that I'm doing, it's ready, and, see what I just did? Then I go for another one, I connect with that, and then I go. 
Let's just get that much so far. Let's do it real slow. A one, a two, do it with me. Ready? kind of changing up that second rhythm. It's not literally the same thing. As long as you fill up the bar with uh, some groovy rhythm, that's the main thing. Two, three, and. Okay, now let me show you something that I do at this point to because I, I want to bring the bass notes back in smoothly without just honking out a, a root note. I want to walk into the... I want to walk down from G into the E minor chord that's coming. So let me show you how I do that. I change the fingering at the end from what I showed you. What I did. So I actually do the last piece of the melody down there. So. so which fingers am I using? I'm using second and third. Then I'm using first and fourth. is hooking up with my foot and I'm going bam bam I'm doing upbeats with the fingers over here let me just let's see if that's the case look at the thumb over here and the foot over here to see if it's hooking up okay Let's break up the videos. Let's go now to the next video where I show you the rest of this improvised solo. Okay, so now we're at the next phrase of what I'm doing in this quasi-improvised solo. Let me show you uh, what's the melodic idea, then we'll add the bass to it. Okay, we've done this. You're going to go. That's the first thing. So I did open, 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 and then 12th fret harmonic on the D string. Okay, then fifth position with the A in the bass. Then I put my pinky down. going to do after that. This, this next thing is a little tricky. We're here. It's like the top of an A7 chord. right? And I'm going to do open D throughout and we're going to let that string ring. That's the first thing. That's actually what I do. So this note is ringing from previously. This note is ringing here very quietly from beforehand. Then I move this down to a sequence. This is a pretty big stretch. Watch what I'm doing. Seventh fret, fourth fret. This is kind of a killer, so I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you an alternative. Going to a C chord. Okay. 
If you can't do this, you can just leave it on the top two strings because that's a, just the top two strings is a lot easier. Once you involve this second finger, it, 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 you need big hands to do that. And maybe your hands aren't big enough or they just don't want to stretch that far. So if we were to just do the top two strings, it would sound like this. And that's perfectly acceptable. Okay, so the, uh, the next thing that's going to happen going to have okay okay then you're going to have oh, only the second finger and you might be wondering Adam why are you making this so hellishly complicated so let me explain to you why this little bit of complexity is going to add to the musical sophistication. You've got you've got this you've got this thing coming down and you've got that thing going up. So one thing's going down and one thing's going up and that adds to a, a musically interesting sound. And then you've got this thing which is a pedal point just staying This one you switch to the A and the bass. Another piece of advice, I'm going to do something a little funny for the video. Watch this. I'm going to put my nose down to the neck of the guitar. Hi. See see my nose coming down to the neck? What, what does that do? That, that brings this shoulder down and it makes this stretch a lot easier to do. You can try that yourself. That's a classical guitar technique, the nose technique. Uh, so if you're having trouble with the stretch, try try coming down with your nose to the neck. Okay, then what's going to happen afterwards is that the F that chord is those two strings open, those two strings second fret, fourth and third finger, and then first finger and then that's all of them in the second fret and something like that you could either that's can it, it can be some type of an F chord going to an E chord or some kind of A minor chord going. That's, again, I'm, I'm an improviser, so I do that a little bit different every time. Okay, so I'm going to play through this entire little improvised section slowly for you now so that you can just see the whole thing go by at a slow speed. And if you want to try to play it with me, uh, that's, that's great. Okay, so I'm going to count you in. A one, two, three. Ready, and... And I'll give you another hint. This is a pretty cool hint. What, the way I'm strumming with my thumb, go for tone. Don't, don't go too loud. Watch, if I, I'm going to let this sound ugly. I'm not going to fix this on the recording. I'm going to play this too hard now. Okay, and you can see that distorts, and it just sounds like bleh. It sounds like someone's screaming. But if I go... Strumming it firmly, and look at this little wiggle in the neck. It 
it's got presence, but it's not ugly. Okay. So anyhow, uh, let's go on to the next video where I do the final hook of the song, which is a little bit different, and the ending. Alrighty, so we're at the last chorus of what Roberta Flack sings on Killing Me Softly, and it's not exactly the same as the other choruses. Uh, let me show you, instead of the opening phrase, I do something similar to her, I go. And then I proceed with the uh, rest of the phrase. Let me show you what that is. It's the E minor chord with G on top. Then I do an A minor 7. Without the third finger, I just kind of, either I slide up the fourth finger, or I do third to fourth. I think I usually do fourth finger. And then doing my inverted weird D chord again because I'm gonna want to hold some of the notes and it's easier to get to a G chord. So what am I doing there? Pulling off from the first fret. And you, you can play this D with your thumb even if you want. In fact, sometimes I like using the thumb on a melody note. It's fatter sounding and more secure. Now watch this. This is all the same. Now watch here. This is cool. If you can get this, this is this is a little bit tricky. See? She sings that the last time, but it's one of the variations at some point that she sings. So let me uh, let me play this whole thing for you with the variation. A one, a two, a y'all know what to do. this ending what is what I do throughout the song they're using this rhythm when they when they come to that transition so I just made the ending out of it and honestly I can't remember at this moment if that's her ending or if that's my ending. I, I don't remember. Maybe she just fades the song out. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember, but it's a nice way to end it on a gig. Of course, fade outs are tricky on solo guitar. So one more time. Here we go. Let's let me play you the whole thing straight through the end. Ready? And. Right there, I'm only playing the, the E and the G sharp. It would be better if I could get this B in there. But let me show you a trick I'm doing. With this finger, I'm nudging it a little bit over here just to mute that string. So we don't, that way we don't have an open A string ringing. Okay, so that's 
how I play the last hook and the ending of the song. Alrighty, so there you have it. That's how to play the arrangement of Killing Me Softly, the Roberta Flack type version. And uh, I just want to tell you, you know, with these sort of brushy techniques, they'll come into focus the more you do it. I, I find that with my practicing. They don't sound right, sometimes right away, but then when I get the feel of the bass and melody and the middle magically fills in from the brushing of that uh, right hand finger, it, it sounds pretty beautiful and funky at the same time. So that's an interesting combination. Anyway, I hope that you have fun with this one and I hope that you make your listeners happy with this one and enjoy playing it. And I look forward to hearing your version of it and giving you my comments. Thanks a lot for watching. God bless.